For adding dormers to the plan, which may be an option on the actual drawing, what we want to maybe do is, is go in and create a building option for this. A building option will allow us to then um, structurally either turn that on or off, depending whether the client wants it, without having to actually store multiple plans, if you will, um, you know, for modification. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up into the second floor plan. And from here, if I go into model, I can go into what is called a, a building option. Now, the building options, um, as I'm looking at it here, you'll see that I can actually come down to uh, the, the listing of options that are here. And by default, we ship with you know 250 options to start, and then you can actually add to that. And building options are different than layers. Um, layers basically control the visibility on the plan only, whereas the building option controls not only will it be visible on the plan, but will you see it in the 3D model, which includes your elevations and cross sections, and whether or not it calculates that in the bill of material. So for those of you who are, and this, this hits all, all you know, uh, across the board, if you're a custom builder, you may wind up offering multiple kitchen you know, uh, island options. And if you're a production builder, you may have one floor plan that has two or three different front elevations. And so this would allow you to control all of those options on one model, okay, which makes it easier to track long term what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into building option number one and I'm just going to call this you know dormers for example and once I've named it I'm going to turn the visibility of that dormer on and then from here I can go in and set certain things like whether I want to lock that so that it can't necessarily be moved or and so on whether it's visible or not. Uh, the fade option which would actually fade the colors out again something I'm not going to do at this stage and then use the item colors and this is something that I do go in and and um, uh, actually deselect and I color code my building options. This way when I add it, rather than walls being that reddish brown color and openings being blue and then the roof being according to whatever color is added as they're done in, in, in sequence, I'm going to color code all of the building option or all of the items on that building option one color. And so I'll just come down here and maybe I'll pick this salmon color as an example. Okay, and so this uh, basically sets this dormer up. And so as I'm looking at my drawing now in the upper right hand corner, I can open up the building option and this is a, a project wide uh, option. So whether I'm in second floor plan, whether I'm in main floor plan, whether I'm in the elevation or the 3D, I'll be able to, to uh, toggle between building options and turn them on and off. But what I'm going to do here is click on the option for dormers and click OK. And so I'm now drawing in this option here. Now I'm going to zoom our, our floor plan up and again we're looking at the second floor plan and I'm going to come in through draw and at this stage from the draw menu I'm just going to select the add false dormer. Now when I click on this it pops up this menu which allows me to make my different selection choices. So I can select the window type that I want to use. And so in this case, I'll just pick a double hung and let's just find something that's, you know, on the smaller side, maybe a 24 by 36. And then from here, I can select the wall type that I want to design this with. So let's say a 2 by 4 in siding wall, for example. And then lastly, down in the lower right hand corner, I can select the dormer type, whether it's going to be gabled or hipped or shed or eyebrow. And so let's just keep it with a gable which fits with the, the style of design for what we're doing right now. And what I'll do is I'll position my cursor onto the drawing and basically as I move my mouse, you can see the dormer follows in, in um, you know, follow suit. And so once I, if I want to position this, let's say centered, you know, roughly between the openings, I click the mouse and the dormer is added. Now, as I'm looking at this, uh, I can place a secondary one over here on the right hand side. So again, I'm just using my crosshairs to align where that dormer is going to go. And then once I'm there, I will click to, to insert it. And so as I toggle between the model Okay, and the floor plan, we can see that there are the optional dormers, and if I don't want those, I could just go back to the building option, remove the checkbox from there, click on the default option because I need a, a current um, you know option you know uh, available or, or active, and then I'll click OK, and it removes it from the drawing that just removed it from the bill of materials. 
Now, the second, uh, the follow-up that I want to do with this, um, because it's, and it, you can see, obviously, a very powerful tool, as it pertains to the dormers and accurately placing those on the drawing. And so if I come back into my second floor plan for just a moment, and I'm actually going to go in and just undo or remove those from the plan. Because when I place them, it literally was just me pointing and clicking where I wanted to put those. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to insert what's called a construction point. The construction point is a non-printable item, and I can actually dimension to that construction point to get it accurately placed. And then once it's set, I can actually come in and use it as my reference for where I want to place the dormer. Now, on the menu itself, it's located under the Tools menu, so if I click Construction Point, I'm so accustomed to using a keyboard shortcut um, that sometimes finding a thing on a menu item, uh, it stumbles a little bit. But once I've you know, found this, or on the keyboard, I can just simply hit the Control key and the right mouse key, I can drop in that construction point. And so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this part of my dormer option. So I'll just come in and position my cursor where I want it to be placed and right click. And so once again, I'll do the same thing over here and control and right click. And it drops these two construction points in. At this stage, I could come in through dimension. And I'm going to select an option called dimension point. And so with the dimension point on, I'll select my F11 snap key. And what that does is it's going to allow me to snap to the construction point, drag my cursor, let's say, to the roof edge, okay, in both directions, and now I pull the dimension off. I'm doing all of this in the default building option that I created called dormers. So once I've set this up, you can see I was close, but there's clearly, you know, some, some editing that could be done. So now I could simply right-click edit this dimension, and I could key that dimension in to, let's say, be 7 feet 6 in from that gable, you know, edge to place it where I want, okay, or 7 foot 4 to get it a little closer to the center point. And then here I could just edit this and say, let's say, 6 feet back. So once again, I'll edit this dimension type in 7 foot 4 and hit the left arrow key, edit this dimension, make it 6 feet. So I've set these two construction points up exactly where I want them to be. Now if I come back inside the uh, draw and I want to pick the add false dormer, I'll keep all of this information the same, position my cursor over the construction point. With the F11 snap key on, it's going to key right in on that construction point for the placement. And once again, I could do the same thing here. Now I've not only got them, you know, I can control what is seen on the model and cost it out in the, in the soft list bill of materials, but I have them accurately placed as far as my dimensions are concerned. As I'm looking at a front elevation, I see the, the, uh, the options. And again, I can make, you know, changes such as, you know, adjusting where I want the openings, you know, relative to the top of the wall. And that could be a simple edit. But then I can also come in now if the client determines that as a cost cutting thing they need to take that off or they I can just simply remove them from there.